Hi everybody, this is Andy from MedSchool EU, and in today's video we're going to talk about genes and regulation of gene expression from the topic of reproduction and inheritance. And more specifically, we are going to discuss the prokaryotic operon. So first of all, let's uh, do a little bit of a quick overview about prokaryotic and eukaryotic gene regulation. So because eukaryo eukaryotes have a more complex uh, genetics and they have uh, typically on average more genes and more chromosomes than uh, prokaryotes and therefore they're going to have a higher level of gene regulation and there's going to be various levels of gene regulation but the most common one is going to be through um, transcription so transcription initiation so the start of transcription is the most common level of gene regulation in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes. And today we're going to talk about um, the, the specifics of the prokaryotic operon, which is basically just a number of genes that are controlled by the same control factors. So typically glucose is the preferred source of nutrient for prokaryotes. But lactose could also be used if glucose is not available in the environment. And so if we take a look at the uh, operon, this is just my best drawing of one. So pretend that this is just part of a chromosome. This is part of the prokaryotic chromosome that uh, is coding for the LAC operon. Um, and LAC operon contains three different genes. So I'm going to label these. Uh, here we have the permease and we got beta galactosidase, which are very important for the breakdown of uh, lactose and trans, uh, trans acetylase. So these are the three genes that are controlled by a single promoter and a single operator and a single capsite that uh, will control these LAC genes. Now, Nearby the LAC operon, there's going to be a regulatory gene called LAC-L. So let's, uh, let's go through this arrangement and how it typically works in a healthy prokaryotic cell. The LAC-L regulatory gene is going to produce a repressor. So this, this is a repressor. So under regular circumstances, when glucose is available, we don't need we know we don't need uh, lactose. So lactose does not need to be broken down. Therefore, we don't need any of these uh, genes to be expressed. We don't need these proteins, pro uh, permease and beta galactosidase protein. We don't need them for lactose because we have glucose available. So we're just going to be using glucose. Therefore, under regular normal circumstances in a prokaryotic cell the lac operon will be inhibited. It will not be used because a repressor is going to bind to the operator. So it's going to bind right here to this operator site. And remember, glucose is the preferred source of nutrients. So if both are available, glucose and lactose, the prokaryotic cell will typically prefer glucose. So that's just the overall picture of how a healthy prokaryotic a cell would function in terms of its uh, environment when glucose is available. The repressor protein is going to be made, which will repress the lac operon. Now, we also have these two other sites that are um, supposedly not being used in this regular arrangement, and that's the promoter and the cap site. And these, uh, these two sites are going to play a crucial role when we're looking at the positive regulation of LAC operon because this is is typically the negative regulation of LAC operon. So now what if we take a look at an environment where glucose is is not available? And however, lactose is available. So if we're looking at this as the prokaryotic cell right here, and that's the cytosol, and our lactose is obviously uh, on the outside of the cell. Now the lactose molecule will have to get through the cell membrane 
in order to get inside the cell. Now, the only way for lactose to get through the prokaryotic cell membrane is through a protein channel called permease. So it needs permease in order to have lactose go through it and, and into the cell. Because again, the glucose is not available, so we need something else in order to um, supply energy to the cell. So once our lactose is inside the cell, we are going to have a series of reactions that will make different products. Now we're going to get our glucose right here. So we get some sort of energy and galactose as well. So we get some sort of energy out of these through catabolism. And we are also going to get a molecule called allolactose. And allolactose is going to be a very important molecule in terms of the regulation of the lac operon. And as you can see here, the breakdown of lactose into glucose, galactose, and allolactose is done through beta-galactosidase. And if you could recall from the, from the previous slide that permease and beta-galactosidase are both part of the lac operon. So they're both regulated by the same gene structures. So the operator that is being repressed by the repressor that's made by the LAC-L gene, which is a regulatory gene, it, uh, it needs to be inhibited. It, we need to uh, denature the repressor so that we can make more permease and we can make more beta-galactosidase so that we can actually break down the lactose and use it for energy because our glucose is just not available at the moment. So if we go back to the previous slide and now we add our allolactose into the picture, this regular arrangement where the regulatory gene produces our repressor is not going to be happening because we actually need beta-galactosidase to, to be made and we need permease to be made so that lactose can get through the cell and be broken down into useful components like uh, glucose and galactosidase so that we can use them for energy. And of course, that's only happening because glucose is not available in the environment. So allolactose is going to inhibit the repressor. So it's going to be called an inducer molecule. So allolactose is also called inducer molecule. Now remember this, just knowing that it is an inducer molecule is important because of the function that it has, because it induces the repressor, which then promotes our beta-galactosidase, permease, and transacetylase to actually be made. So as you can see here, now that our repressor is gone, it's out of the picture, this, this re re repressor is not, no longer bonded to that site, we now have the op operator open. It's going to be in this open arrangement and now the uh, RNA polymerase can bind to the promoter and can go 5' prime to 3' prime direction and produce our mRNA for these beta-galactosidase, permease, and transacetylase, so these are all going to be mRNAs, which will then go on to be uh, translated into proteins. And these are the proteins that will then be used to continuously create allolactose. Now this only happens because lactose is available in the environment. If lactose is no longer available, let's say lactose is gone, we've used it all up, this process will no longer be happening and then the repressor will go right back and repress this whole process. We'll no longer be making those proteins because they're useless. We have no lactose available. Now at that point, of course, the prokaryotic cell would probably have to uh, relocate its position so that it could uh, find more useful resources. 
So now another side we got to look at here because we, we took a look at our negative regulation of uh, gene expression in prokaryotes, the negative regulation of the lac operon in terms of the regulate, regulatory gene and the repressor. This was all negative regulation. Now we're going to discuss positive regulation of uh, the lac operon. And positive regulation of lac operon is uh, dependent on this cap site and a molecule called cyclic AMP. And cyclic AMP is uh, famously known to be a secondary second messenger molecule. So that's another important fact to remember. It's the secondary messenger molecule. And so what happens when the concentration of glucose is low, right? So right here, the concentration of glucose is going to be very low. We get a rise in cyclic AMP. So we get an increase in this molecule of cyclic AMP, which will then make some something called cap molecule. So this is our cap molecule that will then bind to the cap site. And that's the significance of the cap site. And from this binding of the cap molecule to the cap site, we are going to have a positive regulation of our lac operon, meaning that we're going to produce more proteins of permease, beta galactosidase, and transacetylase. They will continuously be produced because this is an activator. The cap on binding to the cap site is an activator activator so as the other regu regulatory response was negative because it was a repressor this is a positive regula regulatory response because it is an activator and cap binding to the cap site activates it now this only makes sense because low concentration of glucose now the prokaryotic cell will be looking to break down lactose to use for energy so it only makes sense that it has a positive regulatory response to low glucose levels. Now, if we look at the other side of the picture and we have a high concentration of glucose within the cell, now obviously we're gonna make less cyclic AMP, meaning that this function is gonna be inhibited with the cap site not being, vis not being um, activated anymore by the cap molecule and therefore the lac operon will then be completely repressed just the way it was before. Now it's not that it's repressed, it's just the positive regulation is no longer happening. Now, although this video is primarily focused on prokaryotic lac operon and its arrangement, I wanted to discuss a little bit about gene regulation in eukaryotes and generally in all types of organisms. Because anywhere where there are genes, there are going to be constitutive genes and there are going to be facultative genes. So typically in an organism, there are two types of genes. They break down into two uh, general categories. And constitutive genes are genes that are always expressed. Always expressed meaning that these genes are continuously expressed, they're continuously making proteins that are gonna be vital for function of the cell or the organism. Now, if we're taking a look at facultative genes, facultative genes are not always expressed. They're only expressed due to certain triggers. So for example, if there's more sunlight, some genes will be expressed more. If there's less sunlight, some genes will be expressed less. If there is uh, more glucose available or less glucose available or more oxygen available versus less oxygen available, all the different types of environmental factors involved, these genes will not be expressed or they will be expressed depending on the environment that the cell is facing. And that's something about facultative and constitutive genes. 
So if we look at the general structure of gene regulation, it will typically happen within the uh, transcription initiation. So as you can see here, everything is about transcription. Obviously, when an activator binds, this is called positive regulation. As we see activator like uh, cap that would bind to the cap site on the lacoperon. This would constitute positive regulation as it will promote transcription. Now, if this cap is removed, as we have seen, no activator, there's going to be no transcription. Now, looking at the other side with the negative, now, in general, a repressor will be bonded to prokaryotic lac operon, and there's going to be no transcription. Now, however, if we remove the repressor because of a low lactose, which is an inducer that will, of course, bind and render this repressor and make it not functional any longer, then, of course, we get our transcription because the repressor is removed. So this concludes our video on genes and regulation of gene expression. In the next video, we're going to talk about human genetics. And more importantly, we are going to discuss the diseases, hereditary diseases being on autosomal genes or if they're linked to the chromosome X.